So for those of you who are here for the second week in a row, I, I came out with my goals video for the month of April last week, and it's um it's going to be one of the most challenging months that I've ever been through, assuming that I get through it with all of my goals accomplished. Um, and oftentimes what happens to me when I am mired down in, in this type of, of work of attempting to be as productive as I want to be in the month of April, what will happen to me is a little bit of paralysis by analysis. I will sit and think too hard. I will stress myself out. I'll get the cortisol up and I won't actually be productive on anything. I will sit there with this sort of more contemplative attitude as opposed to really attacking anything and going after it. And one of the things that helps me when I am talking about goal setting when I am actually pursuing goals, uh, any of these types of things, I like to turn to the individuals who have inspired me along the way, who have inspired me in the things that I want to do and accomplish. And one of those names for me is Joseph Campbell. Joseph Campbell, the hero with a thousand faces, the monomyth, um, a true intellectual on a sort of self-effacing but still deeply introspective level. Joseph Campbell was someone truly to be admired, especially for anyone who has literary type goals, anyone who has um, the goal of adding to letters, right? The goal of adding to really the the... the what it means to be a thinker. And one of the things that I did not know about Joseph Campbell, when I was in college, I sort of went on a spree of investing some of my spare time into exploring people's Wikipedia pages. And I know that it's a flawed sort of website. I know that there are a lot of politics involved in it that don't need to be involved in it. And I know that things get away from Things get away from the truth once in a while on that website. But I really got back into reading and got back into what I hope to be some form of uh, intellectualization. I'll just say it that way. Through biography. It really was through reading um, Jesse James' Last Rebel of the Civil War, Lincoln's Melancholy, um, reading a biography of Andrew Jackson. It was through biography that I really got back into discovering what it was that I wanted to do and pursue on an intellectual basis. So exploring people's Wikipedia's, Wikipedia when you look up at a person is just a little miniature biography. It's a short biography. It's something that can be read in just a host of minutes, and you learn insights into what it is that these great people did with their life, how they became the great people that we know them to be, and certainly Joseph Campbell is one of them. But one of the little excerpts from his Wikipedia that really stuck out to me and has stayed with me since, one of the things that stuck with me in my own life, I took this from Joseph Campbell on a much more minuscule level, a little microcosm. This is from his uh, Wikipedia. With the arrival of the Great Depression, Campbell spent the next five years, 1929 to 1934, living in a rented shack in Woodstock, New York. There, he contemplated the next course of his life while engaged in intensive and rigorous independent study. He later said that he, quote, would divide the day into four three-hour periods, of which I would be reading in three of the three-hour periods, and free one of them. I would get nine hours of sheer reading done in a day. 
and this went on for five years straight, end quote. So what I have done is sort of broken that down for myself on a productivity basis, and when it is that I sit down for my day to begin my work in earnest. So I like to, I like to segregate the definitions in my life. There is your job and there is your work. Your job is what it is that you do in order to earn money. Some of us, our job and our work, we are fortunate enough for those two to be the same. The work being what it is that you are adding to humanity. I can't remember who it was now. Um, maybe less miles? I don't think so. Someone at some point in time said something truly inspiring. Uh, that a person should be ashamed to die until they have until they have added to humanity. A person should be ashamed to die until they have made the world a better place. Something like that. I can't remember 100%. But um, that is what your work is. Your work, and, and for some of us, it's something so... Um, I hate to use these words. I hate to use... So element... I'll say elemental. I, so the... The word that comes to mind is basic, but it's not basic. It's elemental, something so elemental as raising children. Maybe that is your work. Maybe that is your calling. Maybe that is what you were meant to do is raising children, whatever it is. There are going to be times where you are challenged to get into that mode. For me, when I am challenged to get into the mode of creation, challenged to get into the mode of making videos, challenged to get into the mode of writing, I set up what I call power hours. Now, I know it's hokey, it's cutesy, it's sort of, oh, um, sort of grade schoolish, right? Power hour. What are you doing in your power hour today? But it really helps me. Sometimes I will be struggling to do anything, so I sit down with the list of what it is that I need to get done in that day. I need to make a video. I need to get a thousand words of writing in. I need to uh, not just make a video. I need to get my reading in for studying for the video, and I need to clean up around the place a little bit, whatever it is. I'll sit down, and I will write out the schedule. It is currently 11.57. At 12 o'clock, I am going to start a power hour. I am going to start with 15 minutes. Anybody can do 15 minutes, right? You, I can do 15 minutes of anything. I can do anything for 15 minutes with the exception of holding my breath. Anything almost I can do for 15 minutes. So if I'm able to sit down with a single hour of that productivity and touch each one of the things that I need to get done, I will do 15 minutes, for just for example, 15 minutes of writing, 15 minutes of reading, 15 minutes of production, then I'll go do 15 minutes of cleaning. So the writing on a story, the reading of a book for strip cover lit, production of a video in post-production, making thumbnails, doing the tagging part, any of it. If I am struggling to sit down and get all of the writing done that I need, or I am struggling to sit down and get all of the reading or all of the production or all of the cleaning that I have to do, breaking it down into an hour like this, what I call a power hour, is extremely useful for me. Now, once I am a little bit past that, once I have worked, so this is just like this is just like running. This is just like lifting weights. This is just like anything else. Once you have motivated yourself into the place where you can do a power hour of 10, 15 minute segments, four 15 minute segments, and sometimes it's just writing. I have to write for Strip Cover Lit. I have to write for this channel. I have to write a story I'm working on, and I need to hammer a poem out. It could be 15 minutes in each of those, um, each of those different subjects, each of those different projects. But once you get that done, you just you up the amount of time you're focusing on any one thing. So what happens here 
when it's 15 minutes, you can get 15 minutes of work done on anything at any point, right? You can do that. You're not getting the deepest of work in. Once you advance to 30 minutes in, you're getting a little bit better work, deeper work into the process. Now, there have been times in my life where I am exceedingly worthless. I am extremely without merit. I am surprisingly dumb dumb. And then I have to break it down a little bit differently. Get this all onto one page here. Ten minutes, if I am in the place where even 15 minutes of something is simply too much for me. If I am in that place, almost always I can do 10 or 5 minutes. But what you do, what I do, what helps me when I come back to it, is breaking the, the hour down into still four subjects. Cleaning, production, reading, writing. But I work in five minutes of nothingness in between. Because if it is getting away from me, if the work is getting away from me, if the production is slipping me by, probably I'm distracted by something else. So, if what I do is 10 minutes of the writing, and then I allow myself 5 minutes for the phone, 5 minutes to watch a YouTube video, 5 minutes for something else, if I do that for myself, eventually, probably around here, I've noticed for myself usually, I'll do 10 minutes of writing, have five minutes of nothing. <sighs> then I got to get 10 minutes of reading in. I'll do 10 minutes of reading. I'll have five minutes of nothing. By that time, I'm realizing how stupid and lazy I feel. By feeling that stupid and lazy, I'll get my 10 minutes of production in. Probably I'll skip that five minutes and then go straight into the cleaning. Now, this is a weird little trick that we can use on ourselves because if we schedule these things in and we say, yeah, man, hey, these little five minute breaks, you get those, you get to have those, those are yours, take them, take them. We feel a little bit less guilty, a little bit less worthless, a little bit less useless when we actually screw around for those five minutes, which, hey, I want to feel bad when I screw around too long. I want to feel bad when I screw around and waste my life. I want to feel bad when I screw around and drop productivity. But the only thing we do to ourselves when we end up feeling bad about losing that productivity is we guilt trip ourselves into losing more productivity. We go through extreme amounts of paralysis by analysis. We go into even greater depths of worthlessness by punishing ourselves in this sort of ascetic, um, what, what's the uh, St. Jerome who would go into the wilderness and beat himself in the chest with a rock, right? When we get into that place, all we're doing is making things harder on ourselves and being less like the person we want to be. Which brings us full circle. Joseph Campbell did a whole lot of stuff in his life. But one a lot if you go to his Wikipedia, a lot of the life experiences you will find are Joseph Campbell on the move, Joseph Campbell traveling, Joseph Campbelling going to visit here, being on a on a boat, things like that. Um, but this right here, I would divide the day up. I would divide the day into four three hour periods of which I would be reading in three of the three-hour periods and free one of them. I would get nine hours of sheer reading done in a day, and this went on for five years straight. That's an extreme amount of work. And with all that work, he, he decidedly changed literature, decidedly changed entertainment, decidedly changed the study of so 
one of the things we have to do now after Joseph Campbell is look at these stories, and when we wonder where they came from, we have to know that these might have been just inherited from other cultures. These might have been inherited from something older. Um, and w without Joseph Campbell, we may have never completely come to the expectation that stories will be recycled over time. Um, but here's the thing. He would get nine hours of reading in per day. Oh, I, I hope I get to the point in my life where that's possible for me. But here we go. This basic power hour, right? And these fifteen minute sub, uh, these fifteen minute blocks aren't all that much time to get all that much work done. But if you put four of these together, you have an hour of writing, an hour of reading, an hour of production, and an hour of cleaning. Now, the start and stop between the subjects is a little bit jarring, but when you understand you only have 15 minutes to finish whatever part of whatever thing it is that you're working on, there's an extra little get up and go that will work its way in to your system. Now, this is what works for me, and I'm going to have to be using it very diligently this month because I'm trying to... I'll have five videos on this channel. I'll have 30 poetry discussions in 30 days on Strip Cover Lit. There is another creative project that I'm working on that is essentially essentially 2,000-ish words of writing time per day. I want to get 50 words in per day. I want to walk 100 walk slash run 100 miles this month, and I want to get 100 push-ups and crunches in every day. This is going to be power pack now. Another thing, just real quick, that I, I slide in here, when I've got to do, normally when I've got to do push-ups and, and crunches, I break them up into 50s, so 50 push-ups at a time, 50 crunches at a time. Well, four, that works 15 minutes of writing, 50 push-ups, 15 minutes of reading, 50 crunches, 15 minutes of production, 50 push-ups, 15 minutes of cleaning, 50 crunches. It's very easy to work little things like that in as well. Um, where was I? What was I talking about? What was I I was doing something. I was mentioning something. Um, this is, so this is a system that helps me get through production when I need it. I am going to have to utilize this this month if I'm going to get everything done, and I plan to. Um... But if you have any tricks like this, tips and tricks about productivity, about getting the get up and go, let me know what they what works for you. Let me know in the comment section if there are any small things that you do on a daily basis. Oh, that's where I was. So if you do four of these power hours, you have an hour of each one of those things done. If you do uh, power hours on this level, the 30 minute ones, you have deeper work done in each of those things. For me, this has proven when I, so I am someone who is prone to falling off emotionally, to falling off in engagement, to falling off on the things I want to do in life. Um, Normally, what it is that puts me in that place is my job. So if I end up having to work a 60-hour week, it absolutely murders me for more than those 20 extra hours mathematically should. It wears me out. It grinds me down. And I end up not getting these goals sort of worked on in the way that I would like for them to be worked on. But when I am able to come back to this, just a power hour, and touch on each of the subjects that I want to work on in any given day, just a little touch on each one of them in a single hour, and eventually after that, even if you don't get to the 30-minute the power hours, to where you're doing 30 minutes here, 30 minutes there, then the second one is different, you know, even if you don't get there, 
sometimes what happens is you put yourself through a power hour, 15 minutes of each of these things, and at the end of it, well, all of a sudden, I know what I'm writing about. I've started that story. I can go right into an hour straight of that. Or, you know, I got back into that reading. It wasn't so bad. It wasn't kicking my butt like I thought it would. It went pretty well. I'll go ahead and finish that now. You know, or any of these things. I just wanted to share this because it works for me. And hopefully, if you're watching this, maybe uh, you will get some use out of this as well. I'm going to be back for five videos at least. Probably just the five. This month, I will be back uh, on Strip Cover Lit. If you don't, if you're not over there, 30 poetry discussions in 30 days in celebration of National Poetry Month. Sylvia Plath on Saturdays, William Blake on Mondays, Edgar Allan Poe on Tuesdays, Wednesdays with William Shakespeare, uh, starting with the very first sonnet. Uh, then Dickinson Darkly on Thursdays, Emily Dickinson going poem by poem through Emily Dickinson. Then Frost Fridays, New Hampshire. I'm, I'm working my way through New Hampshire still for the third consecutive year. And then on Saturdays, Charles Bukowski. There is currently a poem called Nirvana from Charles Bukowski was the poem of the day for National Poetry Month over on Strip Cover Lit today. So go check that out if you have not already. And I hope to have you back for the next one.